there's one thing you should know about me, it's that I love minivans. I always have, even before I had kids, and I'm pretty sure I always will. They're practical, convenient, and they're the ultimate family haulers. The Honda Odyssey has always been one of my favorites, but in this dying segment of only five minivans left in the Canadian market, it's got some pretty stiff competition. And we'll get back to that in a bit. But first, let's take a look at the 2023 Honda Odyssey. It is what it is, right? It's a simple minivan. The exterior screams minivan. If I could change one thing, it would be standard body colored door handles. Right now it's only available on the top trim, but I just like it when the handles match the rest of the van. Speaking of the door handles, one of the best things about the minivan is that it's got a sliding door. And there's so many different ways to open it so you can get your kids into there in no time. One of the easiest ways is just to open it here. Thankfully, you can also use the key. A couple other ways to get it open and shut are a few ways in the car, such as a button right inside here, as well as right beside the driver's seat. And I never have to worry about parking in a tight spot because unlike other vehicles where the door won't open wide enough for me to lift and squeeze my youngest into the car and into her car seat, these doors slide open to easily and efficiently get to a child's seat. A spacious interior is high on the list of needs for a minivan owner, and that means space in every row and including copious amounts of space in the trunk. In here, with the third row up, you'll still get 929 liters of space, which is way more than what you'd get in some three row SUVs, meaning luggage, Costco hauls, strollers, whatever you can throw inside for an average day out with the family, it'll fit. If you're intent on needing more space with the third row folded, you'll get 2,452 liters. Back to that third row of seating. Passengers back there still have ample legroom plus a USB charger in the third row. Step up into the second row and there's access to two more USB chargers as well as a clear view of the 10.2 inch screen that houses the rear seat entertainment, which unlike many other vehicles is still synced to a Blu-ray player at the front. I'm not usually a fan of rear seat entertainment because the kids fight over who gets to pick the movie, but I do like this how much farther app that's connected to the navigation system at the front. It kept my kids occupied for quite some time. One interesting thing to note is that navigation is usable while you're driving, which is something that many manufacturers choose to disable while the car is moving. It's convenient if you've got someone in the front passenger seat who can punch in directions while you're driving, instead of having to come to a complete stop to look up the directions. Also in the second row are the magic slide seats. There's the option of having a smaller middle seat in between the two captain's chairs in the second row, which allows the minivan to seat eight people. But it can also be folded down to access cup holders or taken out completely, which is where the magic happens. And by that, I mean you can slide the outer seats together, which gives third row passengers a simple way out of the vehicle or slide them back together to separate a couple fighting kids. Note that those aforementioned children will quietly sit beside each other in a parked minivan if ice cream is involved. Moving forward again, the front seats are comfortable and power adjustable with standard heated front seats and heated steering wheel. Ventilated front seats are only available in the top two trims. There's also a ton of storage space, which is exactly what I want and need. The center console storage holds quite a bit in addition to the USB port needed if you're connecting your phone to Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. There's a USB port right below the Blu-ray player, but that's solely for charging a phone, which is weird since there's a wireless phone charger right beside the center console, which is likely where you'll put your phone while it's connected to CarPlay. So what I'm trying to say is you probably don't need a wireless charger here. You probably don't even need this extra USB port here. Just plug it in there and then you could use the extra space here as some storage space. The center console doesn't connect to anything, so there's storage space to fit oddly shaped baby bags or purses in that slot. But I'd be extremely cautious about what you place in that area. If an object might easily move, I'd reconsider storing it there as it's dangerously close to rolling into the driver's foot area, potentially obstructing the pedals. I'm not a fan of the button mode selectors, but it's not the worst thing in the world. I'll gladly keep those buttons if it also means the continuation of HVAC buttons that are so simple to use. And the infotainment system is basic and easy to use as well, especially if you've got CarPlay connected. So if it looks like a minivan and has the practicality and spaciousness required of a minivan, then does that mean it drives like a minivan? Yes. It's not the quickest to pick up speed, especially when you're driving on the highway in econ mode, but in this case, it really is form over function, right? It's not the worst drive by any means. It's quiet and smooth. Its standard 3.5 liter V6 puts out 280 horsepower and 262 pound-feet of torque via a 10-speed automatic transmission. And if you're wondering how the Odyssey does on fuel, well, 
it has the fuel consumption of a minivan that isn't the hybrid Sienna. The front-wheel drive Odyssey has an NRCAN combined rating of 10.6 liters per 100 kilometers, which is right on par with other minivans in this segment, save for that hybrid Sienna. New minivan sales are dying. We know that. Yet we still see countless minivans on the road, and I'll go on record as saying that the minivan crisis starts with its price. Sure, minivans aren't cool. Who other than myself wants to be seen driving this? Despite my love for minivans, I'm not in the minivan market for its stylish looks. I want it because it's convenient and practical, and that generally means that I don't want to be spending someone's university tuition on a minivan. The Odyssey has a base price of $45,590. This Touring costs $56,790, and the top black edition trim, which is new for 2023, will cost over $60,000 when you add the destination fee of $2,000, and quite frankly, I can live without red ambient lighting. Personally, I don't love any minivan enough to drop 60k on it, especially when it'll be largely used by dirty kids who trek snow and snacks into every crease. Used vehicle prices are high, but it's still a lot lower than buying it brand new. You can check out our used guides on driving.ca. Price-wise, the 2023 Kia Carnival starts at $35,795, a whole 10k less than a new Odyssey. It's not my first choice for minivan, but if you're looking for something brand new and family hauling is the main goal, then the Carnival has its advantages. The true competition comes at the hands of Honda's longtime rival, and you really should test drive the Toyota Sienna. While we know Honda fans will stick with the Odyssey, it's important to note that new Siennas are hybrid across the lineup and have similar pricing to the Odyssey, meaning you'll save some money on gas. But maybe money isn't an option. You want a fancy minivan. Well, since North America isn't getting the Lexus LM and will probably never get our hands on Kim Kardashian's custom Maybach minivan, you may opt for the Chrysler Pacifica Pinnacle that costs upwards of $70,000. There's a hybrid version, but the non-hybrid includes the stow and go seats. Then again, maybe you just want to stick to the traditional basics. Can you really go wrong with the Honda Odyssey? It has years of proven reliability with families around the world. Sure, it's labeled the soccer mom car, and it's not the most modern looking, the van, not the mom, but it's practical, and that's what's important. I think the bigger question is, should you A, jump on board with this 2023 Honda Odyssey, B, wait for the light refresh in the 2024 model, C, just wait for 2025, which is when a brand new model will come out for the Honda Odyssey, or D, should you just buy a used minivan? Whichever way you go, I'm sure you'll make the right decision if you choose to go with the minivan. For Driving.ca, I'm Renita Narain. For more minivan news and reviews, check out our website or follow us on Twitter and Instagram.